You know, it's always interesting to me when you, we see the, or hear the term playing God. And I don't know if you noticed the last couple of weeks, it had unprecedented storms over in the middle of the desert in Dubai. I don't know if you've seen that or not, one of the most wealthiest countries in the world. But what they were doing was they were trying to play God. It was called cloud seeding. And, and they would seed, seed the cloud. There I go again, guys. Sorry about that. That they would seed the cloud with certain chemicals and it would rain. And I don't know if you saw the flooding that had taken place there. You need to look that up. But it, it, it's, and I, I, I just thought for all the money, the wealthiest really concentrated of wealth and anywhere in the world and they were trying to play God and it backfired and just unbelievable flooding need to look that up we're in a world today and we're going to look at how that where we're at in the end times and what's taking place with the United States, the Middle East and all these things and, and are we still is the title of the message today blessed. Let's pray. Father, we are so grateful, Lord, that you have brought your word to us, many of us through our church or through our mom and dad when we were growing up, through friends, and Lord, we have been so privileged and gifted to know that we know the way. So Lord, may we just have more of a fervency in our heart to know this is coming to an end and not to be afraid, but to rejoice that we can do whatever we can to reach more people for you. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to go all the way back to the Old Testament, to the very first book, the book of Genesis, Genesis in chapter 12. And we seen a lot of things take place the last few weeks and if you it, it's amazing to me how all of a sudden all this anti-semitism if you don't know what that means it just means the hatred towards Jewish people it just it seems like it came out of nowhere on our college campuses it just all of a sudden happened I want I want you to know this before I read God's word the devil hates anything that God loves. God loves his people, the Jewish people. And we're going to see that today and where we are in Romans 11 says that we are grafted in. In Genesis chapter 12, I want you to look at verses 1 through 3 and we see how actually Israel began, the Jewish nation. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. <clears throat> and you shall be a blessing I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in all of your families of the earth shall be blessed. Blessed, question mark. We're going to look more, you and I personally, but we're going to look at Israel just for a minute. You know, in 1948, <clears throat> the only nation really to be born twice, taken into captivity thousands of years ago, and then again, after that, we see in, I forget what year it was now, but when Babylonian Empire came in and we see that they were taken into captivity, once and for all exploded all over the world. And all of God's people were thrown everywhere into the world. And as we look back on May 14th, 1948, and after we saw what happened in the Holocaust, the United Nations came together and voted uh, in one day. It's so interesting to me that the Bible even says in one day, Israel would become a nation again. How people can't believe the Bible is so, it's amazing to me how all, everything's right there. One day, Israel become a nation again. 
But as we see what's happening in the Middle East, I, I want us to realize that we cannot be like, okay, it's all we over there thousands of miles away and we're right here. To the Middle Eastern nations, they are looking at us the way they look at Israel. They look at Israel as the little Satan and the United States as the great Satan. And as we see the world that we're living and we say, where did all this anti-Semitism happen all over these campuses? Well, we know that there is a plan behind that. And we know where we're living. So all I want you to know today is you see that to be aware what is happening. Do you know the average cost of the really the four or five campuses that this is broken out on as far as all the anti-Semitism that we've seen? You know, the average tuition for one year on those major universities that you've seen is somewhere between sixty and eighty thousand dollars a year. I would like to use the word entitlement. They asked one girl, what are, you, what are you protesting here? And she looked at her girlfriend and go, oh, what, what are we protesting here? It, it was all over the news, if you saw it. Like, uh, I, don't, I don't know. What, what do we, you know, it's amazing. But, but what we're seeing in our world, I, I just want you to see that picture that all of a sudden, it's right before us, that underlying hatred. And we know those are God's chosen people, the Jewish people. And when we see them oppressed, and here's where we come in, and we do not bless them. We do not back them. What does God say? It's still true today that he will curse him who curses Israel. It's a very powerful statement that we see, and it's still true. I want you to know today that you and I do not, as some megachurch pastors that we see today, say that we really don't have to abide by the Old Testament today. Well, the Old Testament, a lot of things we wouldn't even understand in the New Testament without the Old Testament. It all weaves together. You know, one of the greatest ways that I witness to people or try is to say, hey, you know, I'm not going to have all these arguments with you, but you know, every time, it was just in the news this week again, archaeology has proved once again this past week a wall that they found over in Israel from thousands of years ago that they tried to disprove it, and once again, the wall was found just the way the Bible said it was there. It's, not, it's just so easy. I say, well, you know what? It's interesting to me, and I'll talk to you and say, you know, there's never been anything disproven in the Bible. Every time an archaeology dig is done, they find out more evidence that God is real. I want you to know with whatever you're facing today that, that God is, is still real. He's still working in your life. And and one of the greatest things that we see that God did for us through the Jewish people, Jesus was speaking to the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4 and verse 22. They're having a conversation at a well. Most of the people of his day had thousands of gods. And he's conversing back and forth with this young lady. And in Verse 22 of chapter 4, the book of John. You worship what you do not know. This is what he says to her. We know what we worship. Jesus is speaking. For salvation is of the Jews. We come from God's people. Jesus was Jewish. It's very simplistic in a statement, but to know this is why that we need to turn our eyes toward the Middle East as believers and pay very close attention. Why is that? Well, if I told you today, many of you have grandkids or kids graduating in one way or another this time of year. 
And you say to yourself, how did this happen so fast? It's just over. It's like, well, they're little kids, and now they're graduating from high school or college. How did and, and what do you try and do? You try to cherish every last moment that you have, knowing that they're at one time they're going to leave, they're going to go off to school, they're going to get married, they're going to go take a job somewhere, and it, it's, it's over. What I want you to know today that our life is, is rapidly flying by. And we have something that I really believe that we take for granted, and it is our salvation. All of us can look at our life, and we really can't imagine what it would be without this book. What, a, what, a, what would your life be if you were going through something and you couldn't have a quiet time and say, Lord, I, I don't know how I want to do this. What does your word tell me? And, and you open his word up and it pops off the page through the Holy Spirit. And your problem might not be solved, but because you are a believer, the Lord lets you know it's going to be okay. I'm right here with you. It's not perfect. We don't know what it's going to look like, but his word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. That's who he is. I don't know what you're going on, but I know that salvation is through the Jewish people and that we will be blessed. First of all, as a nation, we will be blessed per personally if we follow God's way. I've never been as concerned. I was talking with the pastors before the service today. I've said all the way up till probably a few months ago, well, maybe six months ago, that I always believed that, that the Lord was blessing our nation. This is the first time ever I've, I really ever have said this, that I honestly believe that we are in a time where God is taking his blessing yeah. off our nation. Yeah. I don't like saying that. Yeah. Now, as a believer, as us as believers, and if we continue to live hopefully the way that we're supposed to live, God will still bless your life, but we have to live with the consequences of what we see in the world that we live in, in the United States that we live in, that has turned her back against the true and the living God. Look at one more verse today. I want to expound on this as we look to Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verses 3 through 10. Do you know Jesus was getting ready to leave his disciples? I said, well, what's the most important thing that you would tell us? What's the most important thing that you'll tell us the week later? You, we all have that, don't we, as we, we grow up and we can remember back what our mom or dad and they might not be here with you now. And you can remember that one thing that, that they have just built in you growing up. It's just this one thing, and over and over, and maybe it was a saying or something they did or said, and over and over, and it would stayed with you. Jesus was getting ready to leave this world. The disciples said, Lord, you've taught us many things. We've seen all the miracles that you've done. It's the greatest thing that we can learn from you. And Jesus began this as he looked at them, and he said, don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Do you ever look at different news channels? And we all have different news channels that we know which are maybe a little conservative. I don't know if any of them are really very conservative anymore, but a little conservative. Then we know that are really liberal. So you, you, can, you can filter through and you know which is giving you misinformation which isn't. Do you know that we're living in a time that a hundred years ago, it took a hundred years to know all the knowledge 
all the information that there was in the world. Today, what took 100 years ago for everybody to learn, it took, an, an, it took 100 years if, you under, if we can understand that. What we look at today is what we look back at that 100 years ago, that it took another 100 years for all this new information to come upon us. Now it takes less than a year. You can't keep up with it. And in all that information, there is misinformation. How are you going to know what's true for your home, for your mind, for wisdom, whatever it may be? Well, the, only the Lord can help you. Listen, listen to what he tells us about how much time that we have left. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. The man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. Let me, let me expound on that. Well, the, that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. You've, you've heard me share in the last six months or so some of the things that have been preached and skits that have been done in some of the mega churches across America. They should be ashamed to even call themselves a church on what we've seen. I, I can't believe it. Falling away comes first. God's hand is being taken off the United States more than anything else because we have decided that we can do it on our own. And if we're not careful as believers, we think that way. You say, oh, Dallas. I, no, we think that way because if you have a problem right now that you're dealing with, and most of us do, you you sit there and you try and figure every angle imaginable, try to, to work through that situation. You know, people ask me all the time, hey, you know, Dallas, would you pray for me about this? Would you pray for me about that? And, and then they're calling everybody to pray this. I'm thinking, how much are they praying about it? Really? Think about that. How, you know, and I don't ever want to ask them, embarrass them, but how much are they praying about it? See, we need to really believe who we believe in. If we really believe who he is, then we're not going to, as we looked at last week, we're not going to put a time frame on it. We're just going to believe the Lord's going to come through. might not be in the way that you want it to, but the Lord's still going to come through. Let no one deceive you by any means, for the day will not come unless the falling away comes first. And the man of sin revealed the son of perdition, another was the Antichrist, who opposes and exalts above all that is called God or that is worshipped, though that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. We know that's going to happen in the tribulation time. Do you not remember, here it is, that... When I was still with you, I told you these things. That's what the apostle is telling him. You know what? The Lord has so much to tell us right here about your week. It's getting ready to start. I'm saying, do you remember? Can you honestly say, well, yeah, I do remember what you said here. And, I mean, and it just fits right in what you're getting ready to face. That, that has always been a miracle to me is I open up the word or I listen to a message driving down the road or something and it's exactly what I needed. How often do we miss that? Because we're too busy. Too busy. Oh, you know, there's that new show on, yeah, you listen to people, but oh, there's that new show on Netflix. Did you see it? Oh, and then, oh, but we just binged. We watched all 24 in a row. You know, right? Yeah, I mean, it's just unbelievable stuff that you hear. It's like, what? How many hours did that take? <laughs> what are we living? We have so many things that we can choose from. God's saying, would you just spend a little time with me? And I'll show you exactly. I made you. I created you. I'm your, I'm your savior. I needed everything through you. I know exactly what you need. Just spend a little time with me. Because the days that we are living in, you are in a 
No wonder you're exhausted all the time. You are in a battle from every angle you look at. It's unbelievable what inflation has done to your finances and the pressure that that has put on your family. They say a lot of young people will never be able to afford getting into a home. It's a whole other message. But, but the pressure at work and family and all the things in time. You don't have ever have enough time. All these things that we're facing. But God continues to let, let's finish up here a minute. Who opposes and exalts himself. We looked at, do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things. And now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. The only reason it's not even any worse in, in our world and in the United States that we just happen to live in is because the Holy Spirit is the restrainer that is still holding back the evil. We think it's bad. You know, it was, well, let me read one of the verses and give you what happened this last week. And now you know what is revealed, what is restraining. It's the Holy Spirit that he may reveal in his own time. The Antichrist will be revealed after we are raptured out. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who is now restrained will do so until he is taken out of the way, and then the lawless one will be revealed. That word lawlessness is also we see in Matthew. There is a coldness that we are seeing in our society, Matthew says, and when we're living in these end times. There is a coldness that we see, that we feel, that we're experienced. There is a lawlessness that we see in our society. We all saw on the news, if you didn't, the four officers that were killed in the line of duty this past week, just completely gunned down. They said they were so outmanned, and it was horrible. What well, we see it took place. Never thought we would see something. And now, and I, and I read this just to make sure that the following day, a whole different incident, and there was another police officer gunned down. What are we, what are we living in? Uh, and somehow we feel like or think that we are, <clears throat> well, it's, it, it, it's not going to, it's not going to happen with my family. And, you know, that, that's somehow over, that, that, that's in a different place. Not till it affects you and me to actually feel it. What I'm saying to you today is that we are feeling it. And we know what we're living in. There was a coldness to our world and a lawlessness that we have Never seen, the Bible says, since the day of Noah, violence covered the earth. I'm just giving you a picture of where we're at. What can we do? What does the Lord tell us that, that we can do? Well, let me read a couple more verses and we'll close. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders and with all unrighteousness, deception among those who perish because they, here it is, did not receive the love of truth that they might be saved. It's, amazing. it's so good the way the Lord puts that in there. Receive the love of truth. God loves you and I enough. He's always going to tell us the truth. It's amazing when you have people around you in your life and you know you can call them. You say, I, I, I just want you to be honest with me. Is this, and then you explain, is this me? You want to stay on track in life, in your marriage, with your kids, 
with your grandkids and anything that might be, with you in your own personal temptations. It's God's truth and his love that is so great for all of us that if we're willing to, to listen, we're going to be blessed. Even in this horrible time that, you know, you talk with coworkers or people, they man, can, can you believe this happened or that happened or what's happening in the Middle East or what's going to affect us next and all the different things. I want you to know that even though God's hand is being taken off the United States, he will still protect you as his children. Yes. We're grafted in to his chosen children through Jesus Christ. I don't know what it is you're going to face this week, but I want you to be blessed. And there's a question mark. Our United States of America is, I don't know. Do you know that if your son or daughter wants to transition, in other words, they decide they want to be a man or a boy or a girl instead of a girl or a boy, if they hop on a bus and they get their way to California, it's a law that's been passed in California that once they get there, your parental rights are gone. It's over. And you can't stop it once they get there. They've already passed a law in California to do that. I don't know what we're going to face as believers. But I know there's not one battle that Jesus can't win in your life. If you're willing to believe the one that loves you more than anyone else, if you will abide in his truth. It's easy for me to say it, but for me to walk it this week, to take the time to say, Lord, what do you have for me? What do you want me to do? To follow the truths of his word, if you're willing to do that. I speak with so much conviction that you will be blessed. Let's take an effort. It just doesn't fall in your lap. I used to, I, I've changed from 25 years ago or 20 years ago. <clears throat> I will do whatever it takes to knock the door down till the Lord opens another door. I used to believe that, well, I'm just going to sit here and, <clears throat> and wait. The Lord doesn't work that way. The Lord wants you to do wherever you're at today. And whatever adversity that you're facing, I don't care what it is, to fight it like it's your last battle on this earth, to do whatever it takes, and to know and believe with so much conviction that that door is so closed that God's going to open another door. And the devil can only kick you so long it's only going to last so long. If you continue to battle to know that Jesus, he's always going to win. Will you believe that today? If you do, you'll be blessed. Let's pray. First of all, as believers, I want to ask you today, where is it in your life that And maybe you're, you realize, man, it, it, things are bad and when's the Lord coming back? And, and I, I don't know, am I, am I ready? And, and I hope so. As a believer that we just, just stay on this path. Don't let life get you bitter. It can get you down, but don't get bitter. And let Jesus' love on you with his truth. And his word will always be a lamp to your path and you will experience his peace and his joy that nothing, nothing 
nothing will get in the way. That's why you even showed up today or you decided to tune in because you knew there was another way. It's only through Jesus. I close the day. Are you ready? This world is rapidly coming to a close. And, and if you're here or if you're watching, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, salvation came through the Jews through the one Jesus Christ who was born of a virgin. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior today, we always give an invitation. We invite you. If someone has brought you today, you can walk down here and we'll pray with you. And your name can be written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. But you first have to be willing to believe and take a step and to trust. Father, we thank you today. Lord, we know that this world is changing so fast. The lawlessness, the, the things that we see that only can tell us that you're coming back soon. Lord, may we see you today. May we know there's hope in you. Father, may we get ready. And Lord, the only way is through you. So if there's someone here that doesn't know you as their Savior, may they come forward today in Jesus' name.